the apparition of a woman in a brown hooded cloak has been seen on the West Hill below the castle. According to some accounts, she carries a baby in her arms. She makes her way to the south wall of the castle and on reaching it, she and the baby simply melt into the stonework. Since then, their ghosts have made periodic returns to relive the tragic event. A big hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video and as Halloween is upon us, we decided to visit three iconic locations in East Sussex and explore some of the ghost stories associated with them. We begin our tour here in Rye. Haunted Rye's historic half-timbered buildings and winding cobble streets are home to many things that go bump in the night. With a turbulent history of medieval warfare, invasion, murder and smuggling, it's no wonder that Rye's historic inns have ghostly residents that appear when the sun goes down. Haunted Rye's most famous and oldest pub is the Mermaid Inn, dating back to 1156, rebuilt in 1420, after the town had been sacked and burnt to the ground by the French. This atmospheric pub had many secret passages, priest holes, and sliding wall panels. Smugglers would have used these areas as a hiding place for their contraband or as an escape route from the customs officers. The Mermaid Inn has eight resident ghosts and is reputed to be one of the most haunted pubs in England. Can you imagine awaking to finding a ghostly jewel in your bedroom? One night, not too long ago, a guest reported that she was awoken by two phantoms dueling around the bed she slept in. The ghosts were clashing their swords until one of the apparitions was cut down and collapsed to the floor. The victor then dragged the body to a trap door in the corner of the room and disposed the slain ghost into the secret passage which led to the bar. Other spooky towels include that of a lady in grey, who it is thought to be the spirit of a chambermaid who was murdered by a smuggler for talking too much about his criminal exploits. Then there's the woman who moves clothes around and the man in old fashioned garments that takes to sitting on occupied beds whilst guests try to sleep. Rooms often turn cold for no reason and rocking chairs move on their own. Our second location in today's video is here in Hastings and here's a couple of spooky tales about Hastings Castle. The apparition of a woman in a brown hooded cloak has been seen on West Hill below the castle. According to some accounts, she carries a baby in her arms. She makes her way towards the south wall of the castle and on reaching it, she and the baby simply melt into the stonework. Some hold that she is the ghost of a Victorian girl who had an affair with a fisherman who then abandoned her. Unable to bear the shame, she killed herself and the baby. Since then, the ghosts have made periodic returns to relive the tragic event. Some say she led to her death. Other spiritual activity includes sightings of a female ghost dressed in white. And the ghost of Thomas Beckett has also been seen wandering the castle grounds. The most interesting story of all happened in the 18th century. Sailors at sea 
began reporting that they had seen Hastings Castle appear in its original entirety as it was long before it collapsed into the sea. Maybe tragedy struck that day and the collapse took with it hundreds of soldiers to their untimely death. Our last ghostly location in today's video comes from that very popular seaside resort of Brighton. Today, Brighton is known for being a bright and colourful seaside resort filled with neon lights and thousands of tourists. However, the town has a long and rich history. It can actually be traced all the way back to the very dawn of society as we know it. The first people to settle here would have been pagan, followed by the Celts and then the Romans, the Angles and the Saxons. Each new culture worshipped the very various shrines and holy places in Brighton, albeit in their own unique way. One such location is St Anne's Wells. This is a known hotspot for paranormal activity. So, if you're in search of Brighton ghosts, then this is a great place to make a stop. The most prevalent towns involve demonic children with cat-like eyes. And it has been suggested that the site is a hell mouth, which serves as a gateway between our world and the spirit world. Brighton's Churchill Square shopping centre is said to be home to a very unpleasant spirit who is known as either Black Belly or Angry Mick. He is particularly aggressive and usually is glimpsed in a witness's peripheral vision. He wears a shirt which is open at the bottom, exposing a bloated and bruised stomach. If the witness turns their complete attention on the apparition, he will begin wailing loudly and charges at the individual. CCTV footage has recorded people reacting to him and fleeing, but Angry Mick himself is never seen on camera. Brighton was one of the British towns which really took a severe hit during World War II since it was actually used as a dump site for the Luftwaffe pilots to jettison unused bombs before retreating. In 1940, the Odeon Cinema was bombed during a matinee performance, killing a staggering number of local school children. This prompted Britain to be declared part of the front line. The beaches were closed the piers were dismantled and armed guards patrolled roads in and out of the city. One particularly affected area was the site where Brighton Library now stands. This is a fairly new development since up until the 1990s. The remains of the bombed buildings were still visible here. As you might expect, the area has several ghosts linked to it including a little boy in pyjamas who clutches a wooden train and appears to be in some distress. I can share my own ghost story from this location too, as I once lived here in Brighton for two years. One cold autumn morning about 5am, as I trundled to work in this direction, I glanced across the road and saw a middle-aged woman in old-fashioned 1940s clothing walking in my direction but on the opposite side of the road. I didn't pay too much attention at first but then my vision was blocked for just a few seconds as I passed the lamppost. To my surprise the woman disappeared. I stopped and still to this day I have no idea where she could have gone. Maybe she was one of the teachers who lost her life alongside those children. A big thank you for joining me everybody as I explored 
just a few of the ghost stories associated with Rye, Hastings and Brighton. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, liking the video and perhaps even a comment too. Until next time, stay safe, keep well and bye for now. Bye everybody, bye and thank you.